as we've mentioned, there are multiple types of titrations. There are redox titrations and some various other types you might encounter. But the most common one you'll see is acid-base titrations, and we'll go through those. And these three graphs depict an acid that is being titrated with NaOH, which is the most common base you see being used for that. An acid-base titration is always graphed on a pH scale for the y-axis and the volume of titrant added. So it could be NaOH if it was, instead of uh, acid being titrated by a base, if it was a base being titrated with an acid, then you would add something like HCl or one of the strong acids in order to titrate that base and it would have an opposite shaped curve. But before we go through analyzing these curves, we should go over some of the, the core concepts and the most important points on this graph that you can find by plotting a titration like this. The first one is the equivalence point. And the equivalence point happens when you've added an equal number of acid and base equivalents. And that means that you will have, no matter what acid you're working with, you will have added enough base to deprotonate every single acid molecule that was in your solution. This is the steepest part of the graph, and you can represent it as a point where 100% of the acid exists in its deprotonated form. The other one is the half equivalence point, and that's always found at the flattest point of these graphs, and it's the most buffered point. And what the half equivalence point means is that you've added half as many of the base equivalents as you started out with acid equivalents. And that is very important because that means that at your half equivalence point, you have 50% of the acid still in its protonated form, and 50% is deprotonated. And that is a very, very important point. It's very buffered. And the interesting thing is that for any weak acid that is being titrated with a base, the weak acids pKa will be exactly at the pH where you see your half equivalence point. And so if this is the pH y-axis, whatever the pH is down here, that will be the pKa of that acid. And so those are the two important points that you look for when you're looking at a titration graph like this. The equivalence point, which is the steepest point, where you've added enough base equivalence to take all of the protons that that acid could offer, and the half equivalence point, which is the flattest, most buffered point, and that is where half of the acid is still protonated and half of it is deprotonated. And so then we'll go through each of these individual graphs and analyze the pieces uh, of these graphs. Here are three graphs of an acid being titrated by a base that you should be able to recognize and analyze. And so whenever you're looking at these, first it's probably good to look for the equivalence point. And so the equivalence point will be at that steepest part of the graph. So we have one here, we have one here, and then in this weak diprotic acid, we have a first equivalence point and a second equivalence point. Remember that the equivalence point is when you've added enough of the base to deprotonate all of the acid or to use up whatever protons existed in that solution. In the case of the strong acid being titrated with NaOH, we can't really say that the equivalence point is the point where you first see 100% of, let's say, HCl being deprotonated, because remember, if you throw HCl into water, it will probably deprotonate naturally. So you can't just say that this is the first point where we see all of the HCl give up its protons. But what this is useful for is that the equivalence point of a strong acid being titrated with a strong base will always be at exactly 7 pH. And that's true also for a strong base that is being titrated by a strong acid. The other thing to realize is that because we have a known amount of, of sodium hydroxide, that tells us that we have now input exactly the right amount of NaOH to consume every one of the H pluses that was yielded by the strong acid, which might be HCl, HBr, or something of that description. And so the equivalence point is very useful because at that point you know that the number of moles of the base that you've added 
are equal to the number of moles of the acid that was in there originally. And that allows you to then calculate the concentration of the acid, for example. Now this one, you'll notice, has a very flat point, and that is the half equivalence point. You could arguably say that this first graph does have a half equivalence point, but because the pKa of a strong acid is actually below zero, it's just impossible to plot on a pH scale, and so it kind of gets cut off there. But in this one, notice that the pKa is somewhere between 0 and 14 here. And so this flat part where you find the half equivalence point is exactly the pKa of your weak acid. And what happens at this point is you've now added enough NaOH that it has deprotonated half of the acid particles. So half of them are missing their proton, whereas the other half still have their proton. That is what makes it a half equivalence point. And it's very buffered. Notice that if you were to add a fair bit of base, you wouldn't see much of a change in the pH. Or if you were to remove some of the base, you also wouldn't see the pH fluctuate all that much. That is the definition of a buffer. It's something that resists pH changes in response to you adding base or acid. Here, as we move along, we will see that we reach this equivalence point where now 100% of the acid has been deprotonated. So it has completely lost its protons and all of the acid particles are now existing in the form of their conjugate base. The third one is an interesting looking one. It can be tricky, but all you have to realize is that it's two different titrations because it's a diprotic acid. It's an acid that has two protons. So we have one titration curve for the first proton and one for that second proton. And so here is our half equivalence point. And what that means is that if you started out with 100% of H2A, that's our sort of generic diprotic acid, at the half equivalence point, half of that H2A will, have be, will be turned into HA minus. And so you have 50% H2A and 50% HA minus. And if you remember that the acidity of a diprotic acid is always defined by that first proton, we can then know that the pKa of the entire acid is defined by this first half equivalence point rather than the second one because it's the first proton that is the one that defines the acidity of any diprotic acid. We move up here to something that looks a lot like an equivalence point, and that's because it is. It's an equivalence point, and it's the first equivalence point because now all of those H2As have turned into HA minus. We've deprotonated the first proton from every single one of the acid particles that we had in the solution initially. Then we continue as we add more NaOH, we move up to the point where now we're starting the second deprotonation. And so whereas here we were at 100% HA minus, we get to a point where now we have 50% HA minus and 50% A2 minus, which means that half of these particles have now been deprotonated. And so that's when we've reached our second half equivalence point. And finally, as we continue to add more base, all of the remaining protons that were existing in that acid will be given up and we will reach a point where now we have our second equivalence point. And that's when you have 100% of the acid particle that has been deprotonated twice. So it's going to have lost two protons and thus its charge is gonna to be two lower than it was initially. Now a few other points to be aware of is the location of where our equivalence points fall. Notice that in a strong acid and strong base, the equivalence point falls at exactly seven. But in both of these cases, the last equivalence point falls at a pH that is actually greater than seven, and that's because it's somewhat basic. And the reason that is, is because if you look at the conjugate acid of NaOH, that's Na+, which is completely non-acidic. Remember that the conjugate acid of a strong base is a neutral acid. It's not good at being an acid at all. And similarly, the conjugate base of a strong acid, so something like Cl- minus or Br- minus or NO3-, minus, all of those things are going to be completely useless as a base, and so they have no basic 
ability whatsoever. And what that means is that because the conjugate base of a weak acid is still slightly basic, but the conjugate acid of a strong base is completely neutral, what we have is something that is slightly basic and something that is completely neutral. And what that means is that by the time we get to this point, we have a little bit of a base, we have a neutral compound, and thus it's going to push the pH of the solution slightly toward the basic side. And so just remember, think about what compounds are still left. If this was HCl and NaOH, at this point we would have only Cl- minus and Na+, plus, and neither of those are acidic or basic at all. Those are useless as acids and bases. Whereas a compound in here, remember that the conjugate base of a weak acid is going to be weakly basic itself. And so what we have here is we still have a bunch of Na+, which is completely useless as an acid, but we also have this weak conjugate base, and that makes the solution slightly basic. So just be aware of that, and you'll recognize that the equivalence point for any weak acid or the second deprotonation of one of those acids will always have an equivalence point that's just slightly above a pH of 7 here. And there we go. So when your exam or a question bank asks you a question about titrations, be able to recognize these three distinct curve shapes. The strong acid being titrated with the base, that one does not have a half equivalence point. Whereas a weak acid being titrated does have a half equivalence point. And the diprotic one has two half equivalence points and two equivalence points here. Also recognize that if it's a base being titrated with an acid, it's going to have a very similar shape, except for it's going to be inverted. It's going to start high and end up low. It's going to be an upside down graph like this. Also be able to recognize the meaning of these points. And remember that an equivalence point is when you've deprotonated all of the acid that you had, whereas a half equivalence point is when half of the deprotonation is done and the other half of the acid particles are still protonated. Lastly, it's important to be able to recognize a very special graph. And this is the graph for H2SO4 being titrated with sodium hydroxide. Notice that this is a diprotic acid, but it's a very special one because of the fact that H2SO4 is the only diprotic acid that is classified as a strong acid. And what that means is that because it's a strong acid, it doesn't have this first little half equivalence point there. It goes straight into an equivalence point like any strong acid does. So notice we get to our first equivalence point, and then we do the second deprotonation of the HSO4 minus group. And that is when we see now a half equivalence point and a full equivalence point. So this is the last graph, and this is the one that is most distinctive of any titration graphs that you have. This is the strong diprotic acid, and that only means H2SO4. But if you can just recognize these four graphs, then you're already going to be able to answer a lot of questions. And then if you can analyze and understand the significance of these points, that the half equivalence point is equal to pKa whenever you're dealing with a weak acid, realizing that the equivalence point will be equal to 7 when it's a strong acid, and slightly greater than 7 when you're dealing with a weak acid or a diprotic acid, you should be able to answer any acid-based titration question that comes your way.